Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. You can download those in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide and it's called How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're in the exam room on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be really fab, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And so we're going to crack on uh, working through paper S. That's the specimen paper at the back of the booklet. So grade five specimen paper from 2016. So we're on page 26. And we're going to carry on with question three. So if you haven't done so already, perhaps just have a crack at these questions yourself. It's always better to uh, have a go, even if you get some wrong, it's better to learn by your mistakes. Even in exam time, on exam day, you're only ever writing in pencil, so you can always just erase and have another go. You'll learn more thoroughly that way. And so let's crack on. So all of these questions over these two pages relate to this extract of music here. So just on question 3A, we've got some general performance directions. So in the new, newly revised 2018 onwards exam syllabus, these will be presented to you in a, a multiple choice. However, nothing quite replaces the fact that you've got to revise these. And bear in mind, it's all of grades 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 accumulated. So I suggest that you go through each of those grades and group together thematically all like so, sort of like um, tempo or dynamics together however it is just get creative with your revision and that way you'll help you'll perhaps retain the information a bit more thoroughly and so let's crack on so this symbol here and the right hand of the piano part of bar eight you can see that there Sometimes it's referred to as a glissando, um, it's not quite quite it though, it's an arpeggiated chord because it's specifically those notes that the chord has but you play them um, in quick succession from the bottom upwards so you play in succession from the bottom up. Or starting from the bottom, it's sort of like a harp effect. I think we came across this term in the last paper, or last but one. This is uh, agitato, means agitated, which isn't too difficult to remember. You could also say restless, that would also describe um, the performance direction. Stringendo is gradually getting faster. So if it were that you were grouping these thematically with previous grades, you would perhaps group this one alongside a cellarando. A cellarando and stringendo both mean gradually getting faster. So here we go, so we need to rewrite the last right hand piano chord of the extract, it's marked with an arrow, this one here, so that it sounds at the same pitch, so just keep it related back to middle C so you don't end up jumping an octave either way, and we need to write it into the tenor clef now, so we need to put in the new clef and the key signature, so the clef is the second line the top so we'll construct our clef around that a couple of sort of double bar lines and then the key signature is one sharp and so because the clef so high we have to drop the sharp down C D E F sharps 
and now let's have a look so here's our middle C line and so we've got the E above and the A below and so here's our middle C line C D E above C B A below and they are a quaver and that's that one done marvellous let's carry on so over the page so question B now we've got some intervals to uh, describe describe fully each of the bracketed harmonic intervals in the piano part so harmonic intervals means uh, intervals that occur together to create a, so a sound a single sound um, however the bracketed and we know exactly what we're after so bar one the right hand here so although it looks like it's a melodic interval it isn't because if you, this note is still holding and so you still get that sound of a chord as that note is held on and this underneath note changes so we've got a C sharp to a B so we know we've got to count a seventh one three five seven however C to B, if we look at the piano keyboard, C to B would be a major seventh. B is part of C major. However, because that bottom note has been raised, we've made the interval smaller, and so it's a minor seventh. So let's just pop that one down. That's a minor seventh. Let's look at the next one. So the next one's... Um, in bar three in the left hand so it's this one so you can see we've exceeded an octave now so we've got a compound interval so let's jump the octave and that takes us here so we've got one two three a third a compound third our lowest note is G and G major would have B naturals in it and that's what we've got here G to B and so it's a compound major third to be specific so compound major third. Alternatively, you could count that as a tenth, but you still need to be sure that it's a major tenth. If you don't do the compound jump. Let's have a look at bar six in the right hand. So here. We know that we've got a one, two, three, fourth of some sort. There's F sharps in the key signature, but this is an F natural. Now F to B flat would be perfect, but we're going to B natural, which has made the interval bigger, so we're going up from perfect to augmented. We've augmented that interval, and so we've got an augmented fourth. There we go, we're cracking on. So now we're asked to rewrite the violin part of bar four in simple time. Notice at the moment we're in compound time. Now compound time is two groups of three quavers or eighth notes. And so to make that into simple time, we need to change to two groups of two. And so we've gone from six, eight, two two four so that's we, we need to make sure that we don't change the rhythmic effect we need to still have duple time and so if you remember we do that by removing the dot we're actually squishing the time we're making three beats into the time of three into the time of two and so we've got to remove the dot or add a triplet sign to squish into the time of two so we know that we're in 2-4 and so now let's have a look at bar 4, the violin part. So we need an E and we remove the dot to put that into simple time. So it's two quaver beats now, not three. And then we have one, two, three quaver beats and so we can't um, remove a dot so what we'll have to do is we'll have to add a triplet sign to squish those into the time of two so we've got a C 
and a rest and an E. Each of these are quavers and then we will bracket those and call those a triplet. And so we've now got two beats in a bar. We're still in duple time, but we're in simple time. Nearly there. Let's look at this next question set. So we're asked to complete the following statement. All the notes of bars three and four in the piano part can be found in the scale of a particular major key. So let's look at bars three and four which is these two bars. Now, although we've got a key signature of F sharps, you'll notice that that's cancelled. So the key signature is cancelled. There's nothing else added. So we've got no sharps and no flats. And so that would tell me that's C major. And then to confirm that, you can see that we're ending on, we've got a C chord there that gives us another nice little clue, but we're, we're fully convinced by the fact that there's no sharps or flats. So we're in C major. Let's crack on to this next bit. So we need to give the technical names, so donic, uh, dear me, tonic, dominant, and so on. And the two notes marked in the violin part, we're in the key of G major. So before we even look, let's map out our degrees of the scale. G, B, G A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. We didn't do G because that's full circle again. First, second, third fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh degrees of the scale. So A in bar one is a B. So I'm just going to write that here so we know what note we're dealing with. And then in bar two, this note here is an E. So I'm just going to sketch that there. And we know that B is the third degree of the scale. And so that's our median. That's the technical name. Just have to revise those, get those comfortably settled in your mind. And then uh, E is our submedian. If you can't remember those, just go back through the playlist and just check out the video where we cover that in grade five, the technical names of the scale. So let's now carry on with this last little bit. So just a general orchestral question. So the violin is a member of the string family of orchestral instruments. Name a different family and we need to state its highest sounding member. So you've got a number of choices here. So let's go for woodwind. And uh, the highest of that, well we could say flute or alternatively you could say piccolo which is even higher. Both of those would suffice. If you chose to go for brass, uh, then your top most instrument in terms of pitch would be trumpet. There we go, that's that one. And so we'll leave it there. I hope that you found that beneficial. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying working through it with you. If you can give me a like, please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated, share it out there. Uh, let's um, just spread the joy. I hope that you're enjoying this. If you can also make sure that you have a browse around SharonBill.com. Make sure that you make use of all of the resource available to you to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.